This is Matthew Cratter from Trade University, and today I want to talk about Bitcoin and the tulip bubble. This video is a response to Cranberry Eater, who in last week's video about Bitcoin as the apex predator of money, I was arguing that Bitcoin is not a tame lion. It's more a predator that devours all these different asset classes and destroys all these other cryptocurrencies. And Cranberry Eater had a response, it's not a lion, but a tulip. This is a very common response, especially among people who are new to the Bitcoin space. So I wanted to uh, make a video that answered it. Is Bitcoin a lion or is it a tulip? Of course, calling Bitcoin tulip mania is not a new thing. Here's an article from November of 2013 where Peter Schiff is on, uh, I believe, on CNBC arguing that Bitcoin is a bubble. It's like a tulip mania that is about to disappear. Of course, on the date he was arguing this, this was November 12th, 2013, the price of one Bitcoin was $355. You can only imagine how rich Peter Schiff would be if he had expended the same amount of energy learning about Bitcoin and accumulating it as he has trying to trash it over the past few years. But what, what I'm going to say in this video is if you're going to make the hypothesis and if you're going to make the charge that Bitcoin is a bubble like the tulip bubble, I would always ask, I always ask these people, what would you need to see to change your mind? I would say that Peter Schiff is not a very honest uh, interlocutor in this area simply because he's been arguing the same thing really for eight years now, eight, nine years, and still Bitcoin continues to go up to new highs. So I would say, if you're going to say Bitcoin is a bubble, what would it take to falsify your hypothesis? Or are you just a stubborn troll? I'm beginning to think that that's what Peter Schiff is. He's not stupid, but I think he's stubborn. He enjoys the engagement he gets from battling against Bitcoin. And it's really an unfair advantage for poor Peter Schiff. But if you're going to argue that something about Bitcoin, it's always important to ask yourself, what would I need to see in order to disprove my hypothesis? This is the idea of, Car of course, from Karl Popper, theory of falsification. And this would be something that a lot of people, especially in the public discourse, would do well to pay attention to these days as well. Science is not something that is believed like something in a church. It's something that's constantly questioned. It's something that's constantly contradicted. And we, in, when we're doing good science, we try to ask ourselves what would make a hypothesis not true. This is a, a, a cartoon back from uh, 2017, also comparing Bitcoin to the tulip bubble. And these, these sort of critiques of Bitcoin, the more time goes on, the worse and more embarrassing they look. And what I'm going to argue here is that the real difference is the tulip bubble popped and never came back. Bitcoin has behaved very differently, as I'm going to show you in a moment. But before I do that, if you're enjoying this video so far, please hit that subscribe and like button. Maybe share this video with a few friends as well. So here's a chart of the tulip mania, of the tulip rise and fall. This is from 1636 to 1637. And this is a classic bubble where it goes from close to zero to very, very high prices. And then back in just, uh, call it six months, it looks like, back to where it started six or six or seven months. So this was tulips. This was the end of the, the tulip bubble. We never got an echo bubble or uh, tulips never came back up to whatever this, this is denominated in. They never came back up to 200 and went on to hit new highs. I would argue that the Bitcoin chart looks a lot more like a chart of Amazon stock or Google stock or fa Facebook stock and not at all like tulips. Here is the Amazon bubble, the quote unquote bubble from the late 90s that popped in early 2000 and really bottomed at the end of 2002. This is a classic classic bubble chart. It looks a lot like the tulip chart we just looked at. The only thing is Amazon went on to do something very strange after this. And it's important to, we all know what this story is at this point. Uh, here, so here is the, um, here's the bubble in retrospect down here. Amazon went on to hit many new all-time highs. And I remember as recently as just a few years ago, you had people arguing that uh, that Amazon was a bubble, but you don't hear anyone arguing that uh, arguing that anymore. So that's the chart of Amazon. Bitcoin looks very similar. We had this bubble-like behavior in 2013, where we had one bubble. In 2013, it popped, and then another bubble in late 2013, early 2014. That one popped as well. And so again, if you're just looking at this, you could almost be forgiven back in 2013 if your Peter Schiff does look like a bubble, especially if you don't really understand Bitcoin. But then, of course, when we scroll out 
uh, you see one bubble after another, one quote unquote bubble after another. So here's the 2013, 2014 one, and then here's the 2017 one. And then of course we went on to, um, we went on to go to all time uh, new highs after, uh, after that. So that is the real difference between tulips and, uh, and Bitcoin and the difference between Amazon and Bitcoin. And the thing is, people are very intellectually dishonest. Most people who kept saying that Amazon and Google were bubbles never changed their minds, at least publicly. They never came out and apologized. And there's a large overlap between these, these people and the people who now tell you that Bitcoin is a bubble. A lot of them, mostly traditional value investors who really haven't put in their time to understand tech, network effects, what real money is, global macro, Fed policy, money printing, the end of the long-term debt cycle. We live in a very different time from that period when Warren Buffett made most of his money. Things are very different now because we're at the end of the debt cycle and asset classes are being inflated as the currency crumbles. Value investors and gold bugs like Peter Schiff have had an awful decade because they don't understand how the world has changed. And Peter Schiff goes on to continue to embarrass himself, unfortunately, calling Bitcoin a tulip bubble. So here's the conclusion. When a bubble bursts, and then goes on to hit new all-time highs. So you have some sort of mania, the mania collapses, there's a quiet period, there's a bear market, but then the bubble comes back, it reinflates, and whatever the asset class is, whether it's Amazon or Bitcoin, if it goes on to hit new all-time highs, at least a couple times, even if it does it just once, this is usually a sign that the bubble hypothesis has been falsified, and that this new stock or this new technology or this new asset class actually has a very rosy future. And this is, uh, this is what's been happening with Bitcoin. The people who called it a bubble or a tulip mania in 2013 really should be forced to revise their hypothesis because their hypothesis has been falsified. San Francisco housing prices, if you've ever lived in California, you always hear people talking about how, how prices are high and how they're going to crash, etc. Occasionally, you do get true housing bubbles where the housing outstrips income growth like we had in the mid-2000s. That bubble popped. And yet, California housing and really the national median house price went on to hit new all-time highs. So this is the chart of San Francisco, San Francisco housing prices, the chart of LA housing prices. You can call these a bubble, but uh, they keep hitting new highs. And so this would suggest that there's something else going on here that really the currency is being debased and that this is this is not a bubble. You can't have a 40-year bubble. It just doesn't, doesn't make any logical sense. And the other thing when people compare Bitcoin to tulips and flower bulbs, they, it's a very strange comparison beyond the, 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 the price action and these, these bubble charts because Bitcoin is global, it's permissionless, it's decentralized, it's neutral, it's incredibly scarce, unlike tulip bulbs where you can always just grow more of them. And it's a digital store of value and a medium of exchange. People who say that uh, Bitcoin is just like tulips, when was the last time a country made tulip bulbs legal tender? I guess tulip bulbs were probably a temporary store of, store of value for a year or so and a temporary medium of exchange, but they certainly haven't been that since then. Meanwhile, El Salvador, of course, made Bitcoin legal tender last year. So this is very, very different. People who say Bitcoin's a bubble, you should show them uh, this cartoon where Bitcoin starts off being the kind of uh, soap bubble that you blow and then goes on to be uh, like a small kid's balloon. And then it's a bigger, larger asset class that can actually take you places like a hot air balloon. And then finally, Bitcoin is a bubble that prevents you from, uh, and when you're in your Bitcoin set it all, you can look outside of your bubble and watch the world, uh, the world burning. So it's very clever. And then, of course, there's the classic Peter Schiff one, which we really should always start the new year with. Schiff, bearish on Bitcoin, all the way up from a dollar up to a million dollar Bitcoin, probably. And meanwhile, gold trapped at 1700 1800 for a decade. If you found this video helpful, be sure to hit that subscribe and like button. Hit the notification bell if you want to be notified when I publish my next video. And let me know your questions and comments in the comment section below. Thanks a lot for watching, and I'll see you in tomorrow's video.